all in, gave them all out to friends. Yeah, I, yeah, I found uh, I found eight at my Toys R Us. The first two boxes. Mm. What was that? Like. We'll talk about it in a minute. Okay. All right. <laughs> all right. Hey, I, I'm the last one. Okay. Hello everyone and welcome to TFYLP episode number 284 recorded uh, April 14th 2018. I'm your host Ron Land aka Weird Wolf. Along with me this evening is Robert Simmons. Hola. Howdy howdy. <laughs> hey Master Don. Hey buddy. And joining us uh, tonight is a very special guest Mr. Paul Framel of Ripped Apparel, welcome. Hello, thanks for having me. Good, Good to have you on. on. Um, I, I do, do want to apologize right off the top of the bat, bat about some of the, uh, the uh, if there's, there's any audio issues, issues because, because the way, way I'm having to do this right now is like really convoluted. convoluted. I'm hearing myself echo back, back in my own headset, headset and it's really distracting. <laughs> But you guys only hear once, so every time you talk, it's like paradise. Yeah. Well, it sounds good over here. <laughs> I hope so. I do have velvety pipes. Yes. Um, I'm also doing something else. I'm broadcasting live, and I'm pre-recording. So if the live broadcast turns out to be crap, I'll delete it and upload the pre-record. Um, I'm using a totally different software right now. I'm using OBS again. We didn't have good results with OBS a couple years ago, but I'm hoping in the last couple years we've gotten some updates and everything that helps it uh, stream a little better. Um, right now it kind of looks good, but I don't know if it's buffering or not. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, well, it's on to our uh, our guest, uh, Paul. You want to tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, uh, what you do and and how you got into uh, Transformers? Sure. Um, I mean, I'm I'm just a fan, like I like anyone else, like all you guys. Um, I've been in it since I was a young boy. Uh, I think I got Optimus Prime for my third or fourth birthday, something like that, and um, you know, that dates me a little bit. But I've been hooked ever since. Uh, although I kind of, you know, fell out during the whole Beast Wars era, but came back around uh, 2000 with Car Robots, which I imported myself before I ever knew what Big Bad Toy Store was, you know. And um, just, just like Dawn. Like college. Yeah, the button, the button, the button. Then after, and then I probably think Aaron Archer a few weeks ago for bringing them over a year later so I can buy them again. Yeah, I definitely felt... I, I listened to that podcast and I, I definitely felt your pain on that one. Although, I, I, I kind of liked that they came over. I just was uh, shocked when it was actually called Optimus Prime versus, you know, Fire Prime or something. So, anyways, that's how long I've been in it. And uh, I've steadily become more and more of what I consider... Uh, myself to be a, a pretty hardcore collector, not uh, in terms of Facebook groups by any means, but um, I, I am a big time mint and sealed box collector. Uh, I am a big time character, specific character collector, and um, I mint I've, and sealed I've tub gotten, collector. Yeah, yeah. I, I've been I there. Have my own uh, reli religion called uh, I call it bin life. So there's uh, mantras from the great bin which uh, house all your toys. And, um, you know, for a living, I've always done sort of 
I've been in the music industry for a while. I've done a lot of web, web work, and for the past 10 years, my kind of claim to fame has been creation of a website called RippedApparel.com, and uh, we, we, my friends and my two partners and I created a platform where artists all over the world can submit their their T-shirt designs, and then from the submissions, we pick uh, designs that are going to be sold for. Uh, 24 to 36 hours at this point, and um, we profit share with the artists. So I kind of give them a platform to be seen and get their work out there. And um, you know, after after almost 10 years, we now do three designs every day. They last for they used to last for just 24 hours, but now after the 24 hours, they raise in price for another six hours. Um, that's called last call. And we also have a variety of shirts that are available all the time, which internally we call our, our anytime product. But um, you know, most most e-commerce websites consider that just you know regular mm-hmm. regular product. But since we do everything kind of based on this 24-hour model, those are our anytime products. So it's taken a while to get to that point. And now now just as a full transparency, we used to have a facility here in Chicago which is where we've always been based. But uh, in the past, starting at the beginning of this year, we are now back to kind of how we started. It's just the three partners, uh, and we're outsourcing most of our production. Where for a good four or five years, we had a staff of about 30. We did everything in-house. We screen printed everything ourselves, fulfilled the orders, did all the marketing. And now we're kind of going back to how we started because the industry has changed. But from the customer standpoint and the artist standpoint, it's all pretty much the it's same. It's all the same. same. Yeah, yeah, I know I've I've, I've been following Ripped Apparel, Apparel for several, several years now, now and, and I've, I've got, got several, several of the designs. designs. Uh, I love the Transformer mishmash uh, ones. I mean, for I'm wearing one right now, the uh, Unicron uh, and, and Tron. Yeah, and uh, Rob's wearing another. Uh, some great, great designs. Um, but it's not just Transformers. I mean, you've got a lot of pop culture on there. Uh, you want to go into that a little bit? Yeah, well, I mean, it's whatever the artists give us. You know, whatever ammo they supply us is what we have, you know, to fire, essentially. And, um, you know, we, 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 make, we make it very... We try to stay in this gray area where it's not actually, you know, a transformer shirt. It would be something very close to that, but it's uh, something outside of the universe or outside of the, you know, the IP. Um, that something that pushes it beyond just being, you know, a, what official merchandise could be. That's that's kind of what we've found is our our sweet spot with the customer base. It's stuff that people might want that the official sources wouldn't necessarily give them so i mean i mean if you want to relate it in transformers terms it's a bit like the third party industry in a way but um yeah we we basically will take anything people give us and as long as it's not you know blatantly infringing upon one specific thing we and, and we believe in the design and it's you know well well illustrated um, we'll probably sell it, but every day, every week, when we select stuff, we have to pick at least 21 designs out of out of the few hundred that we get, and that can be more difficult than it sounds. <laughs> Cause I, I can know, imagine. You don't want, like, you don't want 10 designs that are all the same joke, which tends to happen. Like, all the artists think it's really cool that. Uh, that you know, Black Panther came out and it's really popular, so they're all trying to make the same like Wu Tang Wukanda, right? You know, like and yeah. they all do it and whoever does it the best is the one that ends up winning, you know, in in our eyes. But they you know, they're free to take those designs to other other places as well if they if we aren't able to find a place for it. Yeah. So if you don't take it that week, will you take it do you have some that, you know, you put off to the next week or later in the month, things of that nature? Is it that's a, that's a good question. I mean, really, the, the selection process is kind of the secret sauce. I'm not sure how our competitors do it, because there are a lot of competitors in this space. I just know how we do it. And, you know, I, I have a really close um, thumb on the pulse of what the artists are thinking, because we have a really large Facebook group where I interact with them and stuff. And they what they think happens is definitely not what is happening behind closed doors. Like, it's... 
it's um, like we may select stuff to wait for the next week, but we typically won't because within the next week we'll probably have a whole new slew of stuff. Because Usually snowball. what we'll do, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll typically just, if, if there's a design that didn't make it in this week, say we have almost, I mean, this is this would be unprecedented, but like four Infinity-related designs, if you know what I mean. You know, there's probably seven or eight that are really good that came in. We may take one and push it to the next week. But when we do that, that means we took a slot from that particular, like, subset of designs for the following week. So it's kind of risky. Like, we really have to like it. And typically, it can be difficult to find 21 designs that really are all, you know, we all feel strongly about. So um, if we have 22 that we all feel strongly about, it's pretty rare that, that that'll happen. And then we will push it forward. But, mm-hmm. you know, every but every week is different. So I don't want to, like, you know, say this is how it is, and then it, it's actually not like that. So, so theoretically, if you, if you, you took, took every design, design and it's like, like there's, There's three, three designs, designs out of four, four that you really, really, really like, and you push two of them, it would really snowball. I mean, you'd, you'd have a, a mountain of back back designs for, for years. <laughs> yeah, and we've been there before. And so we've kind of found that it's the most fair thing for the artists to just tell them, hey, we're not going to do it, and, you know, feel free to push it somewhere else because they can end up sitting there waiting, you know, like, well, I really want to be on ripped. And so if, you know, if it's not going to happen, it's better to let them know as soon as possible. Do you feel like uh, getting on ripped is like a stamp or a badge for an artist of, you know, a bit of legitimacy or just a cool, you know, tidbit to say, you know, I've been on ripped. I've been on this. I've been on that. I don't know the names of your competitors. Do you think you're that, are you that cool? Are you that important? Um, I don't, you know, I honestly don't like to think that way, but I mean, if our, I've seen artists do it, you know, be like, hey, I've been featured, this design has been featured on Ripped, and they'll do that when they sell it other places. And I think that's great. That means, uh, to some artists, it, it, I, I believe it is a big deal, especially the ones that haven't been printed. And I'm always trying to encourage people to do it. We have no, we do not like have a rule in our artist group that says you have to have been printed to be in it. It basically, anyone anyone can join it as long as they you know identify themselves that's the only rule because we don't want someone coming in there that's like just going to steal everybody's designs because that does happen (laughs) a lot but some but some of the artists do feel it's it's a pretty prestigious thing and that always you know warms my heart when i see that because you know i would just say i mean as i as i described earlier the company is now back down to just three the three core owners you know that's that's part of a reflection of the industry unfortunately it has it has kind of like come down from a wave that everyone was riding high on for a while and i think that has a lot to do with changes in facebook and how advertising goes and all these other platforms where people can easily steal a design and i've been, been saying that a lot on, on facebook. facebook yeah and uh one thing is that i've uh, i have a on my twitter feed i don't do much facebook but i do mostly twitter and i see a lot of people saying hey this company stole my art. They're selling stuff mm-hmm. from from this website with my product on it, and that's one thing I like is uh, you make sure that the artist gets credit and everybody shares in the hard work that's being done. Uh, so that that's very that's very important that you, that you all distinguish yourselves like that. I don't buy a lot of shirts. It's just I'm a big guy. I just don't buy a lot of shirts. But the one shirt I made sure to buy. Off rip was the Optimus, the Peter Cullen doing the Superman pose with the Optimus Prime underneath. That was for the charity for Hasbro Children's uh, Hospital. And I love that shirt and I love this. He's he just doing the whole, and it's the Optimus Prime head, the, 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 the chest in front of it, which I thought was wonderful. And y'all were doing that as a donation. Uh, I'm just curious, it, it, this was a while back, but how much money did that shirt raise? Do you happen to remember for Hasbro Children's that- Hospital? Do you remember how much? That was a special. That whole thing was like every every design is a different story, and that one was a special one. Um, first off, the the artist that did it, his name is his pseudonym is Ninja Inc. and his name is Tim Lim. Uh, he is he is awesome, by the way. So you should look him up. Ninja Inc. is all you gotta look for. Um, he came up with that design, and then you know I was like, okay, this is awesome, but like this is really this is Peter Cullen. So yeah. we we have to talk to him somehow. 
and I and him, Tim and I talked about it, and we figured out the only way we could really do it and not like you know do anything questionable was we have to reach out to Peter and make sure he's cool with it. And we thought the best way for him to be cool with it, um, without like wanting additional you know life you know license money or something, would right. probably be to do a donation to the right. Hasbro Children's Hospital. So that's what we decided to do. And luckily, there was a I'm in some Facebook groups that. I was able to find someone that knew, had booked him for a convention and got me in touch with his agent, which that, that's, that's the beauty of Transformers fandom right there. Like, I don't know how I ever would have gotten a hold of him otherwise. And uh, I was able to talk to his agent and I said, hey, we're going to do this. You know, if, if Peter would like some, sh or we didn't say we're going to do it. We're like, well, can we do this? Mm -hmm. And um, he agreed and he just wanted like enough shirts for his, his nephews and nieces or something. And so we sent them all. We sent him about 20 some shirts, which is quite a bit actually, but um, he, that, it was just so awesome that he agreed immediately. So we were able to do that. That's awesome. And I think I, I know that we ended up sending over two thousand dollars to the Hasbro. And, and it's two awesome. and two dollars a shirt. That's what shows how how great that. Sh if you're not familiar with it, y'all y'all can look. I've seen, seen it many many times at conventions. Yeah, I've worn it. I've worn it once or twice. It's, you know, it just if you look up Peter Cullen Optimus shirt, you get a whole page of results, and uh, it's just it's just great that y'all did that. And that's that's probably one of my favorite shirts. One of my other favorite shirts was the, I think it was yours. It was the Marty the the, the, the Delorean as Marty McFly. Mm -hmm. I think I think that was one of yours, but I didn't I didn't We've get that one. Sold it. So, so just so you guys know, we don't own the designs, the artists right. do. And so I've seen like uh, Back to the Future Optimus. I've seen a few different versions of that. But if it's the one I'm thinking that's on red, that is actually called Marty McPrime, that was yeah. done by an artist named Nathan Davis or mm -hmm. Obvian. And I think he did a version of that that was in a, 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 he like redrew it a little bit. And that was in Loot Crate, but we sold it first. Oh, cool! And we've sold it a few different times. And that artist actually worked for us full time for a while, and he lives here in Chicago. He's a really, really awesome guy. He loves Transformers. That's why he draws them so well. You know, you mentioned uh, Loot Crate, and you're talking about how the industry has changed. And I was wondering, do you think that uh, you know all the subs the nerd subscription boxes that are out there, of which there's a billion, a lot of them include shirts regularly, and so you know the need to go out and buy nerd shirts when you're getting a nerd shirt every month to you um do you think that's impacted you or, or not really and it's other factors uh m maybe it's hard to say i mean we have supplied some of those those crate companies with the shirt that they use so i mean we've actually benefited from them existing oh, awesome uh, but i've also i've also seen a lot of them crash and burn very horribly and it was a it was a model that we were considering getting into we actually talked to uh this might be a little inside baseball but um, we actually talked to Kurt from TF Source at one point about kind of partnering up on some sort of like uh, um, shirt box thing, but it, it it didn't end up happening. And I'm glad we didn't go down that road because at this point we just wouldn't be able to facilitate it not having uh, you know access to production ourselves. So, I mean, I, m more power to those companies. I, I think they're great because they they're expanding. You know, the customer that is interested in this kind of kitschy stuff, and it shows that people are willing to pay like a consistent amount of money to you know get their fix if you will so oh, oh. well i'm, I'm listening to my own echo, echo here <laughs> uh, <laughs> and i just <laughs> noticed rob, rob changed his shirt again he's <laughs> <laughs> silly dog um so, so what goes uh you told us that uh, before, before the show, show that, that some designs, uh, you have some stories behind them, uh, specific, specific designs. Uh, do you have any off the top of your head that you want to mention? Well, actually, you know, in relation to Transformers, that um, that Optimus Prime, you know, Superman design is probably one of the best ones. And following up on that, the artist went to BotCon that year, and it was, I think, the one in Dallas, and he actually had, like, a printout of that design and had Peter sign it. And it was uh, it was pretty cool. Um, let's see, there was just a recent one we did that I thought might ruffle some feathers, but I also thought it was pretty, you know, pretty clever, you know, in the way it worked. But it was um, it was basically some really cute looking 
G1 Autobots marching with signs, picket signs, but they they had basically the Ghostbuster sign and Megatron's gun mode was in there, and that was kind of that was one that we commissioned. So actually, I reached out to an artist like, hey, here's this idea. I think you can pull it off. Would you be interested in doing it? And um, I don't I don't have it like on screen right now, but um, it, it also has Starscream hiding in the background, like he's marching along with them, sort of, <laughs> sort of. Uh, you're like, yeah, I sort of support you guys. But the thing was that it wasn't supposed to be like an anti-gun shirt. You know, wasn't that wasn't supposed to be anti-toy like, toy gun law. Pretty it was much. just anti-Megatron. You know, it's yeah. just like this guy sucks. Let's get rid of him. And uh, I don't know. You know what? Everyone I showed it to said like, "Ooh, don't do that. Don't do that. That's gonna be bad." And we sold it, and it didn't make hardly. No one was angry. Not even one person. I miss that one. I want it. <laughs> or no one told me. There it is. Yeah, that's that's the one. Yeah. yeah. Well, let, let me ask, sir. Um, one thing I'm just wondering is, is there like one design that came through that was so awesome, so incredible, and you wound up not being able to do it? You know, like like is there is there any is there any design that you just could not maybe get clearance for? But it's something that you know just would have been like the like the shirt of all shirts. You know, not, there's not one specifically because we see so many. I like I've seen I, I want to say a hundred thousand shirt designs in the past ten years, and there's so many that have come through that I'm like, oh, we could if we if we could sell that it would it would do amazing. The world would love to see this, and the world would want to buy it, but. It's There's light, just what, lightness issues, yeah, lightness issues yeah. or copyrights, and it's just asking for trouble, you know. And there, there's, it's always a bummer when you see artwork that's so good, and you have to tell someone no. And we really don't give people like a reason because there's just not. I mean, that's how rejection works. You 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 just don't get told why, you know. You know, it's it's not you, know, you, it's me. That's that's what we pretty much tell. On them. that topic. I had an amazing shirt that I submitted, and it didn't get approved in our <laughs> shirt. It's of you oh, with, God. with your CEO title, and I don't understand why this never got approved. And I, I I'm I really upset. I, I'll it's, tell you what, we, there was some discussion generated by it, at least. I, I hope to see it. I'm hoping this can bring, bring a resurgence back, because I need that. I need that shirt so bad. You know how long you I know, spent drawing this? Uh, <laughs> like a, yeah, I'd, I'd say three. <laughs> it, it's possibly in that range of my time. I'm, oh, I'm sorry, that's really upset. It's a lot of money, you know. I don't know why it didn't happen. Time's money. I'm sorry, it might have been a likeness issue. I, I might start a GoFundMe for this to get this cause out there. Why don't you just put it up on a on a print-on-demand site? You can do it. <laughs> you have to pay yourself. Twenty dollars. I have to have your made. approval. Do I have your approval to use your likeness for the CEO yeah, shirt? Sure. Okay, there it is. Sure. That's clad. I'm, I'm not the CEO, yet, so you know that's what. He's the CMO. Don't try to downplay it. Don't try to downplay I'm the it. Chief, Chief Creative Officer. That is my title. Uh, just in case your business partners are listening, he has told me on multiple times the rest of you guys suck, and he is the CEO, and he does all the work, and y'all don't do anything ever. Just to, just to get that out there. Um, not I'm true. Th no, I think Don's, Don's blushing. blushing. No, I'm just, I'm just saying, keep it classy, Robert. Keep it classy. That is the Always highest tough. class I have. I know that's the sad. Part. He's, He's not, not even the deluxe, 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 deluxe class. class. <laughs> I know, you know. I, He's I wonder class. if like a really nice Headmaster Don shirt would go over well. I wonder what Ooh. that would actually. Please, In this fandom, fandom it would. Uh, it Don. would. And that is not a solicitation by any stretch of the imagination, because apparently I'm already Zordon. I am. I, I have been turned into a Ferengi because of my my dynamics uh, ability. Uh, so that is not a. Please do not put me on a shirt. Really. Okay. Don't put me on a shirt. Don, Don if, if one, one of us were, were to draw, draw that. that and it was to be made a shirt, I promise you, you would get part of the money. 
I'd rather not even be on the show because it would be, you would you someone would stick me. And this was done the other day on Twitter. I was drawn riding a Supreme Cheetor, and no, just no. Well, you know, as as an archive, you gotta see this. What I would see, I would I would see it as the Fort Max, you know, pose of him yeah. pulling his head off on the the comic, you know, uh-huh. and it's yeah. just Headmaster Don. That's, yeah. I don't know what the face would look like exactly, but that that's the part where it's up for artistic interpretation. My, okay. My envisionment is an RC standing there taking her head off. Like, like you know, the opening issue of the four-issue miniseries. Yes. And then a shot of Don from behind going, you know, with, with his hand up in the air. with. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> hey, what does this red button down here do? <laughs> oh, it hangs up the call. No, it's the little heart over there saying, do you love it? I don't know why Scott puts that on there. Yeah. But uh, as far as far as the whole the whole process goes, um, now you do hoodies. I'm trying to I'm, I'm trying to remember you do. You've done hoodies. You've done uh, all, all sorts of you know, lady shirts, men's shirts and all that. Have you ever considered branching out into other areas? Again, I mean, I mean, I haven't, I have not looked at the shirts in a while, just to be honest. But I mean, have you, have you thought about branching out into other, either, either soft goods or uh, men's other thongs? Products? Some chap? Yes. Why not? Just, just let's take our crazy on fire train and put it right off the cliff. The, the wheels, wheels are melting. Um, have we done that? Um, at this point, we're not really looking to expand the product line, but we have had lots of different um, items over the years. Like, we've had headphones, posters, um, we these little mini Bluetooth speakers you could use, mm-hmm. um, like, that would just play music or whatever. We had laptop cases, uh, phone skins. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, every time you add a product... It, it kind of exponentially increases the workload because you have to make all the graphics for that for and for any sizes that you have every day three times for for every day mm-hmm. and they have to be put in place and the, you know then you have more SKUs I mean already every day we have over over 150 new SKUs that go live Wow that would which be a- it's part of the problem of what we do. Because not only do we make all those SKUs every day, they don't all get purchased, um, and they only exist for 36 hours. So it's a lot of... We've had to find ways to make the whole process as automated as possible to make it worthwhile. And anytime we add another product, it really complicates things. I mean, we can make it so it's not so complicated, but at this point, we're just trying to, like... We're, we're trying to focus on the product line yeah. we have. And and probably some of some of the artwork either scaled up or scaled down won't fit certain products. Either either what you're shooting for is lost, or the quality drops to a point that it really wouldn't be good on that item anyway. Yeah, I mean, the, there's a certain size we ask the artists for their artwork now. We've actually streamlined the the art submission process compared to how it used to be years ago. Um, but pretty much anything that is the, the size of your chest, um, if it's bigger than that, it might it might start to actually lose some some image quality. But it should be fine shrinking down unless there's a lot of patterns involved because it's all an automated shrinking process. Um, at this point, it really a human doesn't touch much of it except the final output. So there can be some issues like weird mathematical issues by shrinking down. A piece of artwork that just doesn't work quite right for that. Well, so, especially, especially if it's G two artwork and that much neon concentrated, <laughs> it's gonna be like, I can't see the shirt blinded me. Yeah, it'll a, most likely be dull. If, do you have we, a lot can't of get uh, those colors? Do you have a lot of feedback with the artist? Like, if you get a, a submission, I know you get so many. Maybe it's not worth the time, but it's like we really want this one, but it needs a couple tweaks. Do you have back and forth with that, or is it pretty much? Take it as is, or nah, we got too many to go through. There will be, 
it, it's only for very, if we very specifically know what we want them to, to change, we will have them change it. If it's like, oh, we like it, but we just don't know why it doesn't work, we, we won't bother with any sort of um, vague vagueness when we're trying to communicate with the artist. At least that's that's my goal is like, hey, we love this, but you need to change. So here's a, here's a good a good design. So recently there was someone that did an Iron Maiden um, Galvatron. Like the Iron Maiden, the, the, the dude held in the flag on the front of, uh, I think it's The Killer is the album. I don't know if you guys are mm-hmm. Iron Maiden fans, but um, they took Galvatron and they put him in the in the the Torculon, you know, bindings, the web web world stuff. And so I forget what he had up there. It was just like Iron Iron. Web, I think he just wanted it to say Web. I web want web. that. I'm um, sorry. If, sorry, you missed it. Oh. <laughs> it was a few. It was a few weeks ago. I missed that. that. Yeah. But I, I actually, there it is. Yeah, I can't. It, I forget what he had. On, it says Iron Madness in that picture. But he, I wanted him to just make it say Web World, or or I wanted him to say Iron Maniac. And usually the artists like take what I say like. I mean, kind of as gospel. They're like, okay, I'll do it. This guy was pretty adamant. He's like, nope, that doesn't make sense. We're going to, I think it should be Iron Madness. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and so he did. And it turned out pretty good. I think he just really wanted, he really wanted it to look the way the way he did. But the, the artwork is pretty awesome. On that is show. amazing. So, well, I mean, so those instances, like if it's if it's usually if it's text, that's really easy to change because they're usually just a font or something. But um, I try to stay as close to the artist's intent, intended vision as possible. Uh, well, let me ask you this, sir: Have you have you considered since there's always going to be shirts people find out after the fact, and it's just going to be you know like like during like oh I didn't know that existed, and then oh it's too late, it's gone. Have you ever considered doing like a best of run? Say one week you pick all the shirts from the past, or at least how many you want to create, and give every and then promote it like in advance. Like this is our our or like a creators week where you go back and pick the fav- the best shirts that sold the best, that was the most well liked. Have you considered doing that not only as like a boost for y'all and its income? But to give the fans a chance to pick up something they might have missed. Yeah, we we, we have definitely done that. Um, there is a link right now for last year's bestsellers because that's that was kind of our uh, end of year promotion, and that's usually when we'll do it. Is like uh, moving into Black Friday, we will kind of take the last, you know, the last year's best twenty to forty de- designs and put them in our anytime store for a discounted price somewhere usually somewhere between like 13 and 15 dollars which is essentially the same as our daily price so that's a pretty significant discount because usually our anytime shirts are about 22 dollars just because the production the production process is so different so there there is a best sellers list uh, i'm not sure if if that design would make it in i can't remember the the sales numbers but usually it's based on like a best sellers um, a bestsellers, you know, top top twenty to to forty. So we we have thought of it, but like you know, you know what you you bring up a um, kind of an artist choice. You know, we haven't done what we really haven't done in a while is something we used to call artist appreciation month or week or period, where where um, basically artists would get done that time period, and that's something that you know I need to maybe look at doing again. And so, maybe the artist can select designs too on during that period. That would be cool. So before we move on, uh, off the top of your head, what is your favorite design that you've seen come through the store, and what is your least favorite? Personally, he's going to be a pussy and totally not going to say which one his least favorite is. He's not gonna. He's not gonna. Well, it, it could, could be, be a long time. There's just so ago. many, Robert. <laughs> There's so many bad ones, Robert. I don't know which one to pick. That's Usually the, the ones, ones that Robert submits. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm, I mean, if you, if you want to go for the low, low hanging fruit, sure. <laughs> no, no pun intended. Hey, his mother didn't like that shirt submission, for what it's worth. 
Thank you, Facebook. Well, because you you posted it on my Facebook page and. Let's see. <laughs> I, it, this is such a good question, and you know what? It's kind of my fault not being prepared for it. Um, well, while you're doing that, this is probably my favorite design y'all have done. The uh, Scarface with Breaking Bad, the one who knocks. I just absolutely love the shirt, love the show. You know, I know it's not Transformer related, but uh, I always just thought that one was really cool. Oh, and it's also, it's also simple as well, and I think well, that fans, helps uh, heighten it. Fans cannot live by Transformers alone, you know. It, it, it's, what? Uh, it's almost po- It's almost possible. No, it's, I believe, no. but it's that was Nick Holmes. It's, it's practically Kim Possible, is what it is. So there's that. I, I mean, it was, I, I've seen so many shirts. It's it's hard to really give a, a, a appropriate answer. Like I have to think, like in the last few months, you know. But there was one that that killed. I'm losing you, Paul. Yes, yeah. you, you cut, cut out, out there for a second. Can't hear me. It's probably because I'm going yeah. to the website. I'm sorry. It's probably because I was searching a website, but like in the last in the last few months, one of the funniest ones I saw was this like Rick James, Dave Chappelle, like you know Batman slapping Robin, you know that that one panel that is kind of a meme. When I saw that, I was like, okay, we gotta sell this one, and luckily my my partners agreed with me. So that was by a guy named Cod Designs. His name is Steve. Steve Gallanter, he's uh, very talented. He also has a bunch of artists that work with him. My least favorite, God, probably you know. I'll tell you this: our our best selling shirt ever is not is definitely not one of my favorites. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I was going to ask you what was some of your most popular shirts. So this is two birds and one stone. Yeah, it's um, we sold a lot of these. It's it was. The minions holding the TARDIS. Minions, minions holding, holding the TARDIS. TARDIS. Like like the yellow minion yeah. guys. Yeah. Mm. It was a big deal. Just, it was it was we, it was one of those things we just kind of threw it. Like hey maybe this will do good whatever. And it was like our best selling design oh. of all time. Is that it? I got there was multiple images. That is it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, my, my girlfriend, girlfriend loves the minions. minions. I'm sick but of them. She, she doesn't, doesn't know anything about Doctor Who. So she'd be like, why are they carrying a phone booth? That's what, no. No. It's a police booth. I'm yes. sorry. Oh. The, the artist box. did it. I mean, the illustration is good. I'll, I'll yeah, say it I is. Want, I don't want the artist to be like, what? He hates You just don't like that. No, idea. that's not true. You, you just, just don't, don't care, care about minions. minions. I'm just sad. That this, yeah. I'm sad this is our best selling design. Makes me bums me out but i appreciate that it, it could be worse it could be robert's design that would be a new Very bestseller true. by far he's going to he's, he's going to clean it up if that was a big seller yeah, yeah he's, he's going to clean, clean it up and that start shirt's selling gonna make it famous yeah he's, he's going to clean it up and start submitting it weekly <laughs> each time i'll just improve it just we'll a little bit yeah. <laughs> eventually <laughs> like let's, let's just print, print this damn thing <laughs> I, I think, think my personal favorite, favorite though, uh, <laughs> this is probably my second favorite one. Um, but my favorite one was from was it TFCon last year, in U- or TFCon year before last? Uh, the Evil GPS. Um, Ooh, I'm, I'm wearing that. Yeah, yeah, that's that's my favorite one. I mean, it just hits the phantom right in the fields, in my opinion. Yeah, that was all. That was all. Uh, Nathan, Nathan Davis. He came up with that idea, and I was like, "Hey, I want to do a, a really cool exclusive shirt for TFCon because we were selling at. Cause if it's in Chicago, it would made a lot of good sense for us to go sell at the event. Plus, it gave me a reason to go to TFCon. <laughs> and um, what was unfortunate is that the, the guys at TFCon were like, "Hey, if you would have told us about that exclusive shirt, we would have added, you know." a gold G2 air raid or or slingshot. Sorry. We would have added him to the comic. And I was like, ah, that would have been amazing. Cause then then the shirt would have been, you know, like sort of canon for the event. But I'm glad you liked that one. Yeah. uh, Whenever very, very niche. Whenever Sergio pointed it out to me at the, at the con, uh, 
because I went with a as a dealer helper with Capture Prey, and I was walking around before the show, uh, and I walked by the booth, and he's like, "Dude, dude, check this out," and he held it up. I'm like, "Shut up and take my money." <laughs> oh, cool. So let's move on to your uh, the hobby of Transformers and and everything specifically. Um. I'm, I'm assuming, assuming G1, G1 is your uh, soup du jour, as it were. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just from the beginning. I, I still have paid attention to everything else that's pretty much gone on. Um, Are you into, like, like, the Power of the Primes or anything? Ones. Yeah, yeah. I, I like to collect um, things based on characters. So, like, definitely the Terracons are... are they're the, you know, I guess to give you some background, they were the first combiner I ever finished as a kid, or the only one I ever did. So I always thought they were just really underutilized and cool. So I'm definitely into that. And I try to collect like almost the whole modern lines uh, sealed and put them in a bin somewhere, like Robert likes to make fun of me of. I, hey, yeah, I've, I've been, been there. there. You've um, been, been there? Ha. Huh. You see what I did there? there? Yes. Well, years, years ago, before, before I did my massive sell-off, you know, I had probably 12 or 13 bins of nothing but sealed product. I mean, it was everywhere. Yeah. So what are your favorite characters that you like besides the Terracons? Uh, definitely Starscream. I, I kind of boast that... I have, I think, the most complete Starscream collection that exists. So, um, but as far as the list of, uh, so he's my main one. You know, he's. I, I, I'm trying to follow in the footsteps footsteps of Elvin Pena. If you guys know who that mm -hmm. is, he was the guy that kind of like did the. He tried to get every Optimus toy ever, yep. and he tried to get them sealed. And that was like, once I saw his collection, I was like, oh my god, that's what I want to do. And uh, he, you know, unfortunately, uh, he sold it all. I don't know how he managed to do that, but he did. And so I kind of follow, trying to follow in his footsteps uh, for Starscream specifically. Do you but go there's into other characters? Oh, it, do go you ahead. go into pre-Starscream stuff like you know the die clone molds and where some of that, you know, and the knockoffs and some of the wacky Starscream knockoffs that are out there as well? Do you consider that part of it or just bonus? Uh, it's probably more bonus, but I think the Diaclone and the Micro Change stuff, like, if you really want to collect, like, a character sort of collection, you have to go all the way back. So you have to get the Diaclone stuff. And I actually do have the pre-Transformer version of all the characters I collect except Soundwave because that one time there was an auction for a Cassette Man and my mom was on the computer and I couldn't make that last bid. And Ugh. lost it for 150 bucks back in the day. Oh man! So I still don't have that one. The the, the last grail. grail. Thanks for nothing, yeah. mom. <laughs> yeah, mom. What'd you do? Give birth to me? Jeez. But uh, I, I collect. Uh, I mean, I, I do it with Optimus Prime, which is you know that is just insane. To I mean, I don't. I don't collect all the characters like I collect Starscream. It's basically just a loose figure collection for everyone other than Starscream. So I, this display behind me, which, I mean, you can't really tell. It used to be full of Optimus Primes, like one per purse. It's, it's a mess right now because I had to do a lot of moving. But um, it used to have, like, one large Optimus Prime in each in each uh, cubby hole. And it looked I thought it looked pretty great. So when I did PFCon last year, everyone came over and we, you know, hung around and looked at that for a while. Like, if you hadn't seen certain versions of Optimus, it was a pretty cool display to PF look at. PFCon? Yeah. What is that? Oh, it's just it's just a party. <laughs> just a party that we uh, pretend is a real convention here in Chicago. What and, is that, Rob? Oh, yeah, what is that? That is, that is the exclusive from PFCon 2017. There are other parts, but this is all I bothered to bring over. But, yeah. Some masterfully talented Rare. person has hand painted every single bit of this guy. I actually have a on Bruman's videos. I have a a quick video review of it too. So if anybody wants to see more about 
what Paul put together for it. PF Con exclusive. Yeah, it's just a big joke. You know, a friend of... In Chicago, we have a really tight-knit group of guys that uh, we have, like, this text message group that has, like, 100 messages a day, and uh, you can't... You have to turn off notifications because it's just too busy. And we used to keep having meetups, you know, every few months at someone's house, and then one guy's like, I'm going to have Paul Con. So his name is Paul, and it's not me. It's a different Paul. And he had an exclusive wood duck, which was an in-joke. Because he has ducks, he lives by a lake. So he's like, "Hey, this is the P, the Paul Con exclusive." And so I was like, "Well, I'm going to do, I'm going to do PF Con, because it's you know like like TF Con, it's mm-hmm. just a play on words." And he had already taken Paul Con, and then I actually made an exclusive toy, like I got, and it's one of the characters of one of the guys in our Chicago group, and uh, you know he loved this it. Year we're doing it again, and it's it's going to be bigger and better. What kind of exclusives are you going to have this year? Well, definitely, definitely, definitely not, not a Chicago White, White Sox, Sox themed one. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. I do kind of want to pull in the sports teams, like with decos and stuff, but the idea is each character is supposed to be one of the guys in the group. So there's, there's like fiction and everything. There's a comic book and there's uh, artwork for this stuff. Pretty, it's pretty stupid and ridiculous, but I learned, I kind of um, got this idea from uh, DairyCon up in uh, Wisconsin, if you guys have ever heard of that. It was just uh, last weekend. Went to that with this other guy, Paul, who did PaulCon, and man, that is one of the best conventions around, just because of how small it is and how local and how, how passionate the guys are. I definitely recommend going to it, and so I'm- that's... They're trying to emulate what they're doing with their toys is what I'm kind of just kind of the goal with PFCon. So this year it's a set of the clones from Walgreens, but they are oh yeah, you got one. Yeah, sweet. I, I, I wanted one from this year, year but I haven't able to been, been able to get, get one. You got the lucky draw, didn't you, Paul? Yeah, I was really lucky. I was super lucky, and I in my bag was one of the lucky draws, so one of a kind. And uh, it's really hard to get, it's really hard to get the exclusives because they they don't just have them sitting there and you buy them. It's, you have to pre-register and you get one. That's it. And they give it to you at at the entry. And if you didn't didn't pre-register, you're SOL. Uh, for this year, are you going to have, or do you know what other goodies you're going to have other than just the clones? Because you know, last year, for those who don't know, and again, you can see it in my video. Blah blah blah. Um, you know, we had some coasters and we had the little comic that went with it. You know, you're going to do some of that same stuff or not sure yet? There'll probably be like a little goodie bag. There might be a coaster again and probably a uh, a comic, a free comic book, an official comic book, like a Transformers thing. But I don't know. I mean, this I'm st- I've been working on these for months. It takes a lot of time to do this stuff, way more than I expected. I mean, it's just it's outrageous. I mean, I, 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 I got to give credit to whoever's been, been doing, doing these. these. I'm, I'm assuming, assuming it's Fred. Fred. Is it Fred doing, doing those? I think. I guess? I mean, I, I can't. The I try to great. twist his arm to tell me more details. He's he's a he's a tough nut to crack. He is. But I mean, but they've the been doing great on for these. eighteen years. Uh, we're, we're we're trying, trying to grow, grow our little group here in the, the Kentucky, Kentucky, Indiana, Indiana Tennessee, Tennessee area, and I mean, we, we generally, generally have decent turnout to our. Meetups, but nowhere near like a hundred or anything like that. And we also do them monthly, though. Yeah. You know, when you do something every month, you're not going to get, you know, that that size of crowd. If we only did that once a year, you know, and people could plan it out twelve, you know, eight to twelve months in advance, you know, I think we'd get, you know, probably thirty, forty people showing up. Mm-hmm. Maybe more if we actually advertised it beyond just our social network. Yeah. You know, it's pretty much. Do you really want a you know. hundred people? I mean, do you really want a hundred people coming? That's like unruly. I mean, that's something not different. Really. That's not that's not the meetup we're doing. It's a completely yeah. different thing. And I mean, we, we sit around. Uh, sometimes, sometimes we, we have them at the, like, like the Capture Prey warehouse, and we'll, we'll just, just sit around a table, table play Cards Against Humanity, uh, buy toys, sit around and play with them, and just talk shoot nerd. Shit. Do you guys yeah. already know all those guys, or are there new people? Sometimes, Sometimes there's, there's new. Every time. Sometimes, Sometimes there's A new. lot of guys were new to me. 
like you know some of them I'd known online, but you know given that I am in Tennessee, you know it's a I'm not local to Kentucky. It's just close enough that I can make the drive at about three three and a half hours, um, you know, so I can get up there and back for the day. But you know, yeah, there's been plenty of new guys that I I didn't know that that I've met, so that's been awesome. Yeah, yeah we. we uh, it's, it's it's growing since a lot of people's finding out about our Facebook group, uh, like the Kentucky Transformers Facebook group. Uh, so anybody that's in Kentucky or frequent coming to Kentucky uh, can join the group and find out information about the meetups. Um, yeah, I mean, with with the you know the dispersion of Botcon, this is kind of what's happening is we're getting all these compartmentalized little little conventions around around I, w- I mean i went to pete's thing last year too which was and sort of you rob right i was there too yes <laughs> oh you were the, oh you were there too sorry i mean that was that was pretty cool i, I don't know why this year why he's doing it on a sunday so i i'm not gonna be able I, to make it. i actually had asked uh him and jesse about that i think it was on all spark they were replying and they said that their research showed that people found it easier to show up on sunday and and I think, though, that they're looking at the local people, you know, the people that don't have to drive to make it out. Mm-hmm. For them, Sunday worked better. Um, and so I guess, I mean, I don't know. They did their research. I assume they have their numbers, and they wouldn't do it if they thought it was going to shoot themselves in the foot. But I know Pete has also said, you know, coming from after doing BotCon for, like, almost a decade, if if not oh yeah, over a decade with FunPub, that, you know, he wanted that small local show for what BotCon was, you know, back in the day because I know – Pete catches a lot of flack for various reasons, but, you know, he was a fan. You know, he was back at those early bot cons with the Hartmans, and he's been in it a long time, and he wanted that small regional show. So in losing people that might travel further, like myself, like I'm not going to go this year because uh, I can't make a Sunday. It's too far. Um, I think they're okay with that trade off. They just really are interested in that local people that can come up for the day or two anyways. Yeah, it would be great if, since we since we are now getting all of these local conventions, that way people can take. There, there's a better chance for them hitting something locally than in the past when you know. Well, for me, where I work, you know, I get it's hard to get vacation sometimes if where I'm going is in a time period in which everybody's going going on vacation at the same time. So you have to get there. You have like to spring break or fall break. Yeah, you, ha- you have to get your vacation in as early as possible. Otherwise, you might not get it. That's kind of why I never made it to Shardicon, was I just could not get the time off because so many people had already requested off by the time I knew I could go uh, and everything else. But uh, I would I wished Hasbro would get on their collector's club uh, deal that they've been talking about. That way we can have local conventions for the fun and the friendship and the meetup. And we could still get the collector kind of that we got with BotCon from them. That way, it's a little bit more of kind of having BotCon there. It's not an exact substitute. I'm never, you know, there's never going to be another BotCon, uh, you know, and it's it's the way it was or the way it, you know, through John and Carl all all the way through the end of FunPub. But I love the fact that we are getting these more local conventions. People are stepping up, trying to fill in the void. But it would be nice to have that collector's con- that collector's aspect too, for everyone that wants like, I don't know, um, le- like, I don't know, like, Thundercracker is another. Maybe I like to see this mold as Sunstorm. It's just weird. I I, I like to see it in, in the because we've got the dark colors. I want to see this sucker in day glow orange and yellow. You know, I want to see like a Sunstorm color, or you can I'm, have well. You know, I'm, I'm going to challenge. As somebody. I'm, I'm going to challenge a bit in that I, I don't think that anything has changed with the demise of Bot. Well, I mean, other than not having a BotCon really sucks. That that totally sucks because you know that was my that was my jam. Um, but you know, I feel the the small local groups that's been going on for a while because DairyCon's been going on as Paul said for like t- almost 20 fucking years. Oh yeah. And then and then we had we had SlagaCon, we had CharterCon, we had SavaCon. There have been I had Tennessee meetups back in like, shit, I don't, I don't even know, like 04, 05, oh, yeah. uh, with some local guys that I haven't seen in a long time, unfortunately. Yeah. But I mean, um, with... Hopefully they're still out there, but it's like, I, I think that's always been going on. I think it's still going on. And for collectors, I think TFCon is the natural yeah. place to go to, um, which was around during BotCon days as well. So 
I really don't think much has changed, um, other than we don't have a good official convention anymore, and we lost those exclusives that we were giving. Like that's obviously totally yeah. gone, and Hasbro's not filling in the gap. They kind of oh. they kind of started with that RC and the grotesque. You know, those even said club on them. Yeah. So, but no, I don't feel it's been as yeah. It's not the same, but I don't feel like we've seen more little things pop up, at least not yet, because of it. Yeah. I- I mean, Dairy Con is awesome, but like this is this is not for everybody, you know. This no. is a weird. This isn't even a G1 mold. It's a K. It's a KO that an upsides KO from Sir Toys that they just do a really is good. That, is uh, that the one that I think it is? Painting with the bio that I think it is. I th- I don't really know. I don't okay, know. Fluffer. Never. Fluffer is yes. its name. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, Fluffer. We need. We need the official exclusive toys i mean i can i can go without you know another year or two and then i'm going to start you know you know eh. y'all got any <laughs> more of them exclusives uh, that plastic crack <laughs> yeah so, so uh, if, you've if you've listened, listened to the, the show, show any, any length, length of time, time you know that uh we've brought back a segment that we had on the original tfyp uh several years back and it's called ouch my wallet uh so I'm going to kick it off by asking you, do you have anything that has made your wallet say ouch recently? Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's see. I just got this guy. This is, I got this one using one of the eBay coupons recently. Oh, yeah. And this this is a prototype or a test shot of the fall of Cybertron Starscream. And so, nice. kind of going back to, we kind of derailed from the conversation of the character collecting, but, like, once you kind of have them all, you have to start going crazy and getting the weird stuff like this. Now, the and, strange thing is, that's not my favorite mold, but in those colors, being G2, basically, I would buy that. It, it almost has Toxitron colors. colors. I'm like a, yeah, it's, it looks like cotton candy or something, it, you know? It reminds me of that G2 swoop art. That never yeah. Happened. Yeah. 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 And I don't know too much about why they do these things this way. I, I thought we thought the plastic was random, but as I'm looking at this, I think they just wanted to show how different the parts are, or something from each other, or like stuff no on the same, or stuff on the same trees. So it shows yeah. off what's being done on the same trees. It's even so there's, there's only a few guys that I like converse with regularly that are into this kind of stuff, and one of them is a. Uh, he goes by Cobra Zartan on mm-hmm. TFW. Uh, a lot of people know him. Uh, he's helped me get a lot of these things. He has some source. I don't know how he gets them. I don't. I don't ask. But this was just on eBay. Had been there for a while, and with one of those coupons, the price wasn't too bad. You know, like, I now do you try to get? Bucks. Now do you try to get any of the prototypes, Starscream based prototypes you see, or are you like, hey, I have one of this. I'm good now. But like, if you see another one in different colors, would that interest you as well? Well, that's why I didn't buy this one, because I already had, like, a, a weird purple one. And then this just was, with the coupon, it was cheap enough. I was like, eh, it's pretty crazy. I'll just so you're more it. of a, if the opportunity arises and it fits, you will. But you're not like, i got to get all the prototypes that exist or anything. Yeah, you you have, you know, to be a, a, to be a good collector, you have to be strategic and, you know, yeah. but be patient. Do you, think, do you think he really wants to go up against Proto Man? Or uh, Brett, if there's a, if there's a uh, prototype that they don't have and he wants, do you think he's that crazy? I don't. It would depend on the the piece, really. But the, like there, a, I mean, I'm definitely gonna bow out at some point. I've I've spent a lot of stupid money on toys, but one of the coolest things that came, that was on eBay recently was that blue micro change bumblebee. Did anyone catch that? Ended up going for over two grand. No. Um, I've, yeah, it was. I was the high bidder for like you know up to like fifteen hundred bucks, knowing it was still going to go above that you know on purpose. Did, but. did Alan buy that, or was he just talking about it? Because I know he's a mini bot collector. Someone else, someone else okay. bought it. Someone else did. But yeah, so that wasn't a huge ouch, but it but it was you know it was what I got. Just showed up today. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know we were talking before the, the show, show went on the air. air. And I recently got this guy, the uh, uh, movie studio leader, Grimlock. And he's not perfect, 
I mean, I mean he's, he's got, got some issues and some clearance issues, or not clearance, but posability issues. Uh, and I don't particularly like that the inside of his dino head is hollow, but he also has that skeletonized look, so it kind of fits. You know, I don't, I don't like it, but I don't hate it either. Gee, it's, it's almost like putting paint on something helps it make it look better. Amazing. 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 I mean, just, just my thoughts on that toy are... I'll leave it at that. You don't like it? Man, I I've, really, awesome. I've really grown out of the movie stuff. Like, I'm not even buying anything from that line. I, I generally hate movie stuff, stuff. Yeah. But, but I, I love, love this guy. guy. I well, did like a couple of the Voyagers from uh, The Last Night. Like, that Prime molds a lot of fun. So, um, begrud- begrudgingly admit it. It's a cool toy. Well, well the the, uh, that new st- the new Star Scream is un- unbeatable. It's just really good. Oh, the Voyager. Yeah. I'm, I like I'm the Dino- I like the Grimlock Duran. I-, I think it's I think it's great. Yeah, yeah it's, it's the, the detail, detail on it is amazing. amazing. The, the head, head, like you said, said the, the robot, robot head is insanely detailed, detailed insanely accurate. accurate. Uh, but I, I, I can't, can't wait to get. get a hold of the Thundercracker, because, because that'll, that'll be my, my first exposure to the, uh, I guess it's a Nitro Zeus mm-hmm. uh, mold. Is and it exactly the same, or some slight remolds, or heavy rework, or what? I think it's slightly remolded. I know it's got, like, a new head. I think it's just the head, and that was, like, a little, you know, non-transforming Titan Master head. Yeah, it, I think that's all they did. Yeah, you know, supposedly there was a scene in the movie that was cut that where Cogman was able to take control of Nitro Zeus. That's why you have the uh, Titan Master ability to connect, but it, it was cut from it was either cut or not even filmed in the movie. One or the other. That's, That's a shame. shame. Uh, I'm not even going to go into last, last night. night. <laughs> yeah. That whole film is a shame. <laughs> it's, it's a travesty. Mm. Uh, well. For a Michael Bay film, it wasn't bad. Asterisk mark. That's that's my that's my answer to the when even when someone someone asked me that. You know, it's always a caveat. You, you know, know, if you, you sit down, down, turn your mind off, and watch it, you'll, you'll probably get entertained. entertained. But if you if, if you're, you're a Transformer, Transformer fan at all, generally I, I don't like it. it. Yeah. I think if you have to preface your review of a movie saying if you get a lobotomy, it's tolerable. <laughs> I, I think you've already lost. <laughs> There's plenty of movies That's out there that I can I can enjoy as for what they are, like Starship Troopers. I mean, I oh, love yeah. that movie, but it's, 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 it's not a good, good movie. But it's awesome, it's just, nonetheless. You know. Well, for, for yeah. me, that's like The Shadow. It's a terrible movie, but every time I watch it, I hate it a little less. I'll eventually actually like it another thirty or forty years. Why, Why do you, do you keep, keep watching, watching it? it? Whenever it's on, I have to, I just have. To, if nothing else, I have to watch the disgust eyes. Just build the movie. They're just disgusting. You know what? You, you know, know why you watch it? it? You, you don't, don't know, know, but the, the shadow, shadow knows. The shadow knows. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say it's some some form of Stockholm syndrome. Yeah, thank you, Bill Ridicule. That's that's a reference for all you old fans. So, so Robert, Robert or Don, Don uh, do you have? A transformer related out to my wallet. You might want to mention. Go ahead, Robert. I've I've, yeah. I've got a few things, so you go ahead. I mean, I budget my stuff out, so if I want to buy it, you know, like like if it has to fit into my budget. Um, some of my bigger purchases recently, though, I've been actually was scripting up a review for these earlier today. Is a uh, got these guys, uh, X Transbot trucks. You know, they're not new or anything, but shows these store has been having a sell on them. And awesome. The hoist is. I love the hoist. I love that hoist. The Trailbreaker had a few issues. I didn't. I maybe not want to get them, but that hoist is really nice. I, I ended up being just. I'm surprised at how much I like them. Like I'd watched reviews on them and it kind of turned me off. And I still think Takara is going to do them someday. But they've they've really gone silent on G1 MP. So I said, you know, I was like, fuck it, I'm going to buy them. The price is right. And if if me buying them is the catalyst to get Takara to release them. Then, then I'll, I'll fall on that sword for everybody. You, it's like, you know. oh, he bought a G1. He, he bought a third-party G1. Do the announcement. Yep. The uh, other thing I got in with that at the same time, transformer-related, was um, these the rumbles oh. upstairs. 
these two guys also were really awesome. And I went ahead and finally got the birds with it too. I hated having to buy these as a set. I didn't really want to. That's um, everyone I talked to wanted one or the other, but yeah. they didn't. Either you got people that wanted laser beak or they wanted buzzsaw, but they didn't want to go with a set. And that's weird. They yeah. didn't do them individually. Yeah. Well, I guess they just got their money out of it better that way. But yeah. either way, all of these were the sets were all really nice too, though. They they look really good together. I kind of wanted, wanted the rumble, rumble but, but he's really cool. Now that that's I'll have a review that, out later. Now that's the one we saw at TFCon in Washington last year with the pile driver motorized arms, right? Yep, that's yeah, him. Okay. I, mean, I remember seeing them on one of the tables. Did uh, those well, don't fit into Soundwave, right? They're too big. No. No, they're they're the size of regular cassettes, not mini cassettes. Oh, so okay. what, what they, they need, need to do is they, they need, need to make fame is they ha- they have like a a, a okay. crunch swivel right yeah. yeah that's the new they need they, they need, need to make an oversized, oversized sound wave for, for them, them to fit into well hang on wait why Zhang will probably do that before too long they they just they just take it throw make it out of the way which, which everybody's going gaga over. over I mean yeah. and if I'm you're talking here. about ouch my wallet is the DX9 Gabriel. Um, which yeah. I've I've got from GCI Toys, which probably he's probably going to be getting them in pretty soon. So yeah, I'm thinking about getting the Guardian version because yeah, I've already got the Fans Project version because I was able I, I was able to really dynamics him down. Basically, I wound up getting Part B for free, is what the way it worked out. Um, oh, that's nice. Yeah, but Gabriel, I, I want to get the uh, the uh, Guardian version so I can have the two different colors. I'm hoping Y Zhang does make a spring with theirs, just so I can get all three versions and have each one as a different character. They could do Mechabot. Uh, Does anyone know what Mechabot is? The uh, the Diaclone predecessor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dark gray, dark gray with red and stuff. Yeah, I mean that. Oh, that would be that would be a nice. It's just I don't I don't want I don't want I don't want to triple dip on Omegas, you know, unless there's something, you know character wise there i just want the autobot medic from the Y Zhang one i don't want the rest of it i need to find somebody that'll sell me the medic how does it how does anyone have room for these omega supremes they're as big as a child i have i mean this is my masterpiece shelves behind me i have no fucking clue where i'm gonna put that thing i i mean i bought it anyways i was like i'll make room but i need to rework my shelves in general my uh my my fans fans toys uh Omega. omega Takes, takes up two detox shelves. shelves. And as, as you, you can, can see behind me, I got a shelf that's got G1 Fort Max and Titan Return Fort Max. And then I have another shelf that has Titan Devastator, Titan Trypticon, the Toys R Us uh, Primus, and the Takara Gajin Rai. Yeah. I have nowhere else to put a giant toy, and I have LG Metroplex uh, on the horizon. I don't know where I'm going to put it. The roof. There's always the roof. I mean, but 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 is, is I love is giant that, toys. Is, uh, but I mean, where's everyone going to? Where, where are these eight thousand Star Wars barges going to go? Other than <laughs> in a garage. The, the next the next Kickstarter are for shelves. Well, see, I, about... I, can't, I can't say anything because in 1996, when I got my when I got my Grand Maximus, I got it from uh, at BotCon from the Japanese dealers. The guys uh, that was uh, Fumihi, I think Fumihiko was still going to those. I think if that's the right name, and I bought it. And Duran, I mean, you've heard the story of me t- of me buying the Grand Max and everything there at BotCon. And then I, after I get to the room, I realized I flew there. I didn't know how I was getting it home after I'd already paid for it. Granted, it was a Grand Max for three hundred and sixty-five dollars in the box. So yeah, you do that. You well, figure it out. It's I, worth the shipping. I, I, mm-hmm. Yeah, I found a way. But yeah, talking about stuff that's too large. I mean, my back yes. cave is still in the floor. I <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have to get new shelves. Well, He's just well, sitting well, on the floor. The, well, you need the big computer to go with it so they can talk to each other and have something to do. I'm already to the point now where I'm kind of wondering. Where in the hell I'm going to put, like, just general releases? Like, Titan Returns. I mean, not Titan Returns, but Power of the Primes. Power of the Primes. I mean, I've, I'm starting to reduce. I'm starting to focus my collection more. So, like, the Masterpiece stuff 
you know, kind of gets me going more these days. So I'm kind of paring down on some of the older mainline stuff. Like I cut out a bunch of movie toys and some uh, Unicron trilogy stuff. I kept my favorites, but you know, more of those might pare down. I think over time, a lot of the chug stuff, I'll probably start getting rid of some of it. And I mean, you know, it's like I bought it, I'll enjoy it for a few years and then I might move on a bit on some of it. I think that's what's going to start well, so I can have room for bigger toys and nicer toys. We've, we've, we've covered, covered that, that on, on the podcast, podcast before. before. Yeah, yeah um, there's, there's nothing, nothing wrong with downsizing and clearing out more room for more toys. toys. I mean, we've, we've all done it. Done it. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Don, Don makes a pan of shame. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, uh, I, I did have a, a ripped question, you know. Um, I, know I know we've moved oh, yeah. on, but I'm sure you've gotten this question before, Paul. I might have even asked you before, but do you ever get any uh, cease and desist letters? Because, you know, again, you, know, you guys are pretty much parody stuff, but, you know, it's obviously you don't own any of those IPs that you guys are parodying all the time. But, but that's, that's just, just it. It's that parody, parody, isn't it? it? That's not going to stop a lawyer from sending a letter or getting yeah. nasty. Anyone anyone can sue you for anything, or they can try to. You know, doesn't matter. We always try to tread the right path you know we try not to tread too low um and you know sometimes people don't still don't like what we're doing you know and rightfully so it's that's their of course they're some people are going to say that um i'm sure there's lots of companies that wish we just didn't exist at all but we like to think that we're perpetuating their brands and not actually you know taking anything from them uh because we're we that's why we that's why we really stop to think about every design that we're selling nothing everything is a human decision there you know b- basing it against the facts that we have yeah but but yeah we will get we'll get some angry angry outsiders here and there it it happens probably a lot m- more rarely than you would um and i guess that that's pretty much all i really want to comment on that but um it, do- it doesn't you- happen very often and it hasn't ever really been a huge problem for us. But, but it have does you happen. ever taken a design down because of it? Um, I mean, like during the day of sale, no, because we we basically inherently cease and desist by design. You know, every yeah, every that helps. Four hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's kind of the point. Um, you know what's weird though is sometimes we'll get we'll get a letter about something we sold a long, long, long time ago, which that's always funny. It's like, well, it's okay. We're done. It's gone. You it's win. Really, they don't, we're not going to sell that anymore, sir. Yeah. You're right. Or, or, or they just don't understand that it's not for sale. You know, like even though it says not for sale on the page, they'll send us a screenshot and it's like, look at this. And it says not for sale. We're like, it's cool. They just don't want it to even be there. So we'll take it off. That's fine. But I always like, you know, I, I, I so a cert, certain companies will reach out to us like that, and I'll look at my competitors, what they're doing, and I'm like, are these guys getting the same letters? Because they're literally printing, like, character A, like, just saying, yay, on, on the T-shirt. With, with I'm Batman. No, yeah, and it's almost like, it's not even an artistic representation. It's almost just like a cookie cutter, you know, found this on the net and copy pasted, so... You know, it's just the way it is. I, I think it's a given in the business, business, honestly. Well, we never did. We didn't start doing this pop culture stuff. That was not the plan. You know, that that's just kind of like what naturally evolved out of the out of the customer base and what people people voted with their wallets. And this is uh, where we're at. It was it was an evolution revolution. So, so how, how did, did it start? start? Uh. Are we done with the Ouch My Wallet segment? I well, don't wanna, like, I, I think, think Dawn. Be I, I think, think we needed Dawn, Dawn still. Oh, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I had a question. I thought about we, it. Sorry. No, that's we fine. can come back to that, that specific question. Okay. I, I'm happy to talk. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how much of this I went over with last time. Um, one thing I am very proud of is not Transformers, but I got my Zeo Ranger Morpher that I had, couldn't find locally, so I now have the uh, Zeo, Zeo Morpher there. That was uh, something that was hard to find. Uh, but transformer wise, I picked up the first three of the Mech Fan Toys Dinobots. I like the DX9 ones, but I didn't like that random yellow that they had trying to replace the gold look on the originals. 
Uh, so I picked up the first three of these. Uh, I found, I found these, and these have been going up in price for the longest time. And I found a seller with a, with a, with a uh, good uh, eBay feedback. I got them for twenty three dollars a piece, which is about twenty about twenty less than what a lot of people were asking for them. Um, are those are those the ones that combine into a bigger guy? No, no. The uh, DX nine DX nine does the war in the pocket or the the small oh, legend right. scale figures. These are slight upscales and recolors. In a more traditional G1 look, and I re- and there's some interesting transformations there, and I wanted to get those. Uh, again, I showed off Thundercracker that I picked up from my my toys R Us. I picked up uh, second time was the charm. The first one I got was supposedly new, and it came in used. Uh, Warbot Defender, which is one of the last uh, fans pro well possibly last one of the fans project toys because. My Diatlas is unfortunately treadless sitting in a dark closet, and I have nothing on display for Diatlas, so that was a good alternative. And thanks to Don and Alex, I got him for 85 shit. I hear Fan Project is just restructuring. They're not, they're not gone, they're just restructuring. I've heard that. I've heard their fans' hobby. Again, unless some insider has information they want to come forward, I don't know for sure. But that's the two things I've heard. One, they're restructuring. Two, they're actually fans' hobby under a new name. I don't know. That's just what fans' I'm... hobby designs are. So I mean, like even if it's the same, I could see it being the same business, but it's definitely a different designer because all the right. fans' mm-hmm. hobby stuff is very chunky. chunky and bulky. Yeah, yeah. right. But um, I picked up Chigura. Decided to go back and pick him up because I hadn't. I love it. One day Keith is going to do an Astro Chain, and I'm going to buy it. That's what mm-hmm. I'm waiting on. Well, see, I, I got Evil Star during. I, th- I think you were there when I got that Evil Star. Mm-hmm. Uh, at, at that at that TF con and I because I, I like the steam locomotive more than like the current locomotive like I, that's just what I prefer to this I think it was botcon, botcon the one in uh, St. St. Charles. Charles okay yeah and uh, so I decided to go back and get him uh, I got black leader class blackout because I really didn't care for the Grimlock I mean it's just it looks better in those colors but it's still movie Grimlock and I'm kind of Done on movie Dinobots, uh, and on an unrelated note, I also picked up thanks to clearance sales some Dynamics. I picked up a complete classic '85 Voltron from the Playmates line for about eighty bucks for the entire set. So I'm um, kind of happy with that. It's still Line Force, Nazca's vehicle team, but for seven fifty bucks, I'll be all right. That's not. I mean, I mean if, if I, I if I, I had the, the room. room I'd be all over that, but as as, as it, it is right, right now, now uh, my legendary Voltron, I'm actually considering getting rid of it just to have a shelf, an open shelf, because my whole legendary team, uh, legendary team, is taking up an entire shelf right now, and I'm like, I need it. <laughs> I just I just hope Bandai doesn't do a solo Chigokin vehicle Voltron anytime soon because it's like because I've got the Miracle Productions version which Same. I do like but it now have you got one two or three I got three I've got one with two level replacement parts I never I never got the three but they did send me all the level two replacement parts free of charge oh so it's just as good yeah it's, it's just it's just about as good but we need a solid to go can rope vehicle Voltron in my opinion after try on three that's just me I gotta get that Solo Chigokin uh, Lion Voltron if they reissue it. I missed out on them the first time, but I'm, I'm just tired of Lion Force. But that's just me. Uh, I can see that. So, so, so Paul, let's let's, let's come, come back, back to the topic, topic here. here. Um, the origin of Ripped. Uh, how how did you guys come about the idea for it, and how did it start? Well, um. Back in college, I was in a band that was not notable for any reason, and we learned to we had to make shirts. You know, we sold shirts of our designs and stuff. So I kind of learned that process, and I was studying graphic design uh, as my my major in college. And so, a guy that I lived with in college, and a guy that was my drummer in the band who we also went to high school with, they ended up all moving to Chicago, which I was already there at some point in uh, 2008, 2009. And we saw, there was some shirt that 
got we spread around. It was a, a, a day on a daily T-shirt website, and one of my friends kind of came to me like, "Hey, check out this website." It happened to be like an Obama, like a pro Obama shirt or something. Um, just like an artist had drawn a caricature of Obama and put him on. And it was one of the, the featured si- shirt on this website. And my mm-hmm. friend said, you know what? I bet we could do this, what this website's doing. I'm like, really? And um, so he had like kind of the business side. I had the art side and the, the production, um, how, to, how to actually get the product made um, side of it. And our other partner was like kind of handle the website portion, like making the actual platform. And we we had a took a car ride back to our hometown in Iowa, and over that three hour drive, we kind of like came up with the entire plan of what we could do and what how we thought we could do it, and just the the basis of we didn't have a name, um, we didn't have much other than the concept, you know, and we said, hey, we're gonna meet next Monday, and we'll that'll be our first meeting, and so we met every Monday since that on the dot. Every, every week and then within five months we had our company started and the website was up a month after that and we haven't missed a day since so since june 8th 2009 we've had new designs up on our website every night at midnight central time so, so what was the original concept of the we- of the website and the shirts it was it was just um, ten dollar t-shirts, and it was just men's shirts. I think it was small through. It might even have just been small through XL. The actual beginning, uh, no women's shirts, and it was just whatever you know artwork. Pe- we we had to search out art from artists online. So we kind of like found stuff that people had posted and be like, hey, would you like to feature on our website? We didn't really have a submission process. You had to email us your design. You know, and that could be in any format under the sun. So it was just a lot more hands-on, a lot more, um, a lot more bootstrappy than it is now. A lot, a lot of stuff we've automated. You know, like the whole there's a submission process where there's a format you send it in, and you know, it's an online form that takes care of everything and spits it out in the back end of our website, so we can look at it and vote on it a certain way. But the artwork was more. Um, just kind of original design aesthetic. Uh, there was actually a lot of clip art too back then, but um, a lot of it, you know, I always, at the, at the, when we started, I think one of my art directorial decisions was like, no text on the shirts, it should be all visual, you know, and like that clearly has gone out the window since because <laughs> almost, almost every design has like some text on it somewhere. Awesome. But I do remember being like really, really like holding on to that as an in- artistic integrity part of it. It, it really wasn't meant to be some sort of parody website, but um, we just found that the designs that really sold well, you know, had a connection in the past for somebody of something they saw somewhere down the way. So nostalgia has become a very big part of of what we sell at Ripped. And me being into Transformers as much as I have, I kind of understand how that nostalgia works, at least, you know, in our fandom. So mm-hmm. I try to use that to help guide my decision making process do you remember your first t-shirt that you sold or at least oh yeah one of your very uh, first designs can you yeah share it was called it? more more trees for birds by uh nanang superman was was the artist's name he was some dude in uh i think indonesia uh, I, know, I think we sold 34 of our first shirt which i was like whoa i couldn't believe it because uh when we started this business i was like i just did it as a i just was like wanted to do something with my friends and I knew I could, you know, be involved, but I really didn't think it was going to work because I was like, how are people going to know that our webs? we're going to turn it on tomorrow and no one's going to be like, oh, ripped apparel. Let me go check it out. But somehow that was my next question is how did you build up your marketing from the in the early days? I know how you do it now. Nowadays, you get uh, you get screwed by Facebook. That's how you do it these days. But yeah, well, back then, you know, I, 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 t- I say this all the time, almost whenever people ask me this question, I can't pay Facebook for what I used to get for free. You can't, it's impossible. I could, you can, there is not a correlation to how much money you spend with how much you get back there. It, it just, it's just a random, it's a, it's a real mess actually. And I'm not sure how it, or if they're even going to try to fix it, but 
A lot of people um, are upset. Well, way farther than just you. Yeah, I, I, I like him. That. I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not screaming. You know, I'm not upset. Upset. You know, it's just. It's. It's. it's it, I have to deal with all the Facebook marketing right now, and it's. I mean, it's making my hair gray. You can see, like, I'm starting to lose it. You, you know, know, I liken, I liken that, that to uh, growing, growing this podcast. podcast. You, you know, know, we've gotten, gotten to where, where we are today simply by word of mouth. mouth. I've never paid for one Google AdSense, uh, you know, a Facebook ad. I've, I've, I've considered it. But how's the be- what's the best way to reach your core target audience? By reaching out to people that you are interested in what you're what you're doing and say hey here watch us listen to us try it out if you like it let other people know and that's how we got where we are you know yeah i mean i would say i didn't really know how the internet worked till i started having to make money off of it you know that changed <laughs> that changed my entire outlook you know and i, I talked to um you know, I'm really good friends with Ryan at, at Saber. Been friends for many years, and I talk to him all the time about this stuff because you know he makes his living off of people just browsing his website, and you know we try to pitch ideas back and forth on how you know how to make how to make it work without like just charging people for visiting and stuff. But it's a very difficult thing to do, and I think as a Facebook marketing, when you have just kind of a culture ba- like. You're generating a culture in your community, you know, mm-hmm. people that listen to this podcast that get enjoyment out of it and they just want to support it. They're not paying for anything necessarily. With me, I like I have to be con- creating conversions with my advertising. So I wouldn't I don't recommend I don't recommend advertising for um, non e-commerce based sites unless you know you're not going to be like making you have to know that that money is like being thrown in a fire. You just—it's really going to be hard to, to, to. Um, I can't think of the word right now. I'm, I'm fried. I guess you know just attribute the the spend to a result. It's going to be difficult for you unless it's maybe subscribers. You know, downloads. You mm-hmm. could maybe see, and it's probably going to be a long term thing. It's probably going to take a few months to see an effect, but it might be huge. And you just yeah. don't know, and it and it it's really risky to, to go down that road. I mean, it's it's difficult it. for us to monetize, especially on YouTube, because sometimes we use some copyrighted imagery or content, and YouTube just cracks down on that so fast. You know, outrageous. So we just choose not to monetize the right. I choose not to monetize the YouTube channel. Who knows how much we could make if I could do that? We actually would well, require you could more make subscribers. Some yeah, of content that are specifically for monetization, you know, and like the podcast as as it exists is just like outside of that. That might be one mm-hmm. way to do it. Still, a long. It's going to take a lot of work, and a, and it's a long play. You know, it is. Yeah. Well, well, let me ask you this, sir. Just as, as an option, have you? And again, this may be something similar you've already commented on. Um. Have you considered maybe going to the different retailers, like let's say Captured Prey, Big Bad, TF Source, just all the all the major transform retailers, and offer them a, a, and work work with your artist and offer a selection of shirts, exclusive, and each each website gets their own selection of different shirts, and that customers can order that from the website. Now, granted, it it, it will take it, it's not it's not sent by that website. But you know, be sent by us, sent by you, and they would know. You know, you're checking out and paying for it in their shopping cart program. But that way, everybody, all the major retailers, even the minor ones, could get a shirt or two, and that would increase your traffic and give them some exclusivity without having to maintain a product in their warehouse. Is that something hmm. you might look at down the road? Well, you're you're talking about essentially drop shipping for, um, you know these other companies so that it could be possible they would have to be on if, if any of them are listening you'd have to be on shopify specifically for it to work but um it's not it's not a it's not actually a pretty good idea we we have we did a, a deal with tf source at one point because i, I mean that's made me think pretty, of that kurt and i are pretty friendly i don't know if they're still up on their website but they have um they they actually bought 
a few select designs from us and like made an order like a like a larger order that we then shipped to them that they were going to sell on their website after the fact you know but they were going to have to actually that was a long time ago and they yeah. had to actually hold the product and i've actually made some deals with ages three and up and in the past as well, but I think they sell those specifically in their retail store. Yeah. Well, I was thinking that would be it's a good how, idea. Yeah, you, know, you know how Amazon has little add-on four and five dollar items to get you closer to the shipping. If y'all yeah, had a shirt sell. for say for say twenty bucks, and someone's looking at okay, I'm at Captured Prey, I got a hundred and what what is it, Durant? It's still it's still one fifty for free. Yeah, one fifty. Yeah. yeah. So you got something for one thirty five. You've got what you need. Nothing else you're looking for is out right now. But you can get an exclusive shirt you can't get anywhere else for twenty bucks. That would be a plus the money you save on the shipping. Would you know well, if if here, that, if that could be if that could be part of it? If I'm drop shipping to them, there's no incentive for them to lower their. Sh- there's no incentive for them to make that part of the lower uh, shipping yeah, deal I because see. I would it would actually be more expensive because I, I would be shipping a separate a I separate see. piece. But I think there is. I'm, I'm being technical here. I'm, I'm not being fair, <laughs> but uh, I think there's something interesting about what you're saying, though. But that's why and you're seeing. Part, it's partnerships. Yeah, it, it just seemed like every, it's sort of like a win-win. Everybody gets a unique design that no one else has. The customers could get something that, without yeah. having to, you know, go to ten different websites that they wouldn't find anywhere else, anyway, if they did, and y'all get more traffic. So it just seemed like that'd be a, a good thing. Well, from a from a retailer standpoint, it, it's a win win when both the companies are making money. Yeah. And not, we we don't care if the customer's happy because they should be. They're going to be happy just by getting the stuff. Right. You know, or they wouldn't buy it. So ultimately, that when I'm when I have to make a partnership with someone, that's that's what I have to be worried about is making um, making sure we're both feel, we both feel like it's not we're not putting in extra effort and getting less like return. From oh, them. oh, definitely. But if yeah. we had this automa- if, if we had like a print on demand thing that would that would that would be pretty cool. That's, there's something there. That's interesting. Cool. I need one of the I need one of those e-tailers to come talk to me. <laughs> nudge oh. nudge wink wink say no more. Come on Kurt. I know you're out there. <laughs> I'll just text him and tell him, "Hey, did you listen to the last YL- TFYLP man? Hook it up." All, All right, right everybody. everybody. I, I think, think uh, uh we, we need, need to wrap, wrap up here. Uh, I, I want to thank you, Paul, for uh, coming on, and uh, it's, it's been, been a pleasure having you on. Um, hope, hope you've enjoyed your time on here. The, yeah, your podcast is awesome, and uh, I just think, I don't know how many other people are listening to it, but I've been listening to it for the past month, and uh, I, th- I think it's uh, it's really, really well done, and you guys are having good conversations, and I like listening to it. So well, We really appreciate that. Absolutely. Uh, Robert, Robert Don, Don, do you have any uh, closing thoughts? No, just uh, thank you for being on, sir, and thank you for making such. Uh, I love a lot of your designs. They're funny. Your your artist pool is just phenomenal, and uh, just thank you. For, I guess thank you for being part of the uh, the family. I guess. Well, thanks. I would just say, uh, thank buy you, shirts, Tom. buy them from Ripped, and uh, hopefully, I can make PFCon 2018 whenever it has a date. Oh yeah. After my wedding, maybe I'll have a date. So oh, you guys have a coupon, right? Oh, thank you. What's, What's that? that? You guys have a ripped coupon, right? Uh, uh yeah, yeah, the the ten uh, percent. Uh, yeah, the um, uh, if, if you're watching, watching the video, video it's down, down in the lower left hand corner. Uh, uh, but if you, you go to t- uh, to uh, ripped apparel, and you do your shopping on the checkout, use the promo code TFYLPPod. And you'll, you'll save ten percent on your order ripped. Yeah, and it's worth mentioning that once in a while these things don't work, and it's for a limited time. And it's usually because we have a better promo going on at at the current moment, like an auto discount. If you bought fifty bucks worth of stuff, you get twenty off. So mm-hmm. if your coupon doesn't work, it it will work again later. This, there's a better coupon going on right now. So. Yes. Well, thank, thank you all for joining us this week, week on TFYLP. TFYLP. Uh, I hope it turns out okay. Uh, again, I'm trying something different tonight. Um, you know, until I can get the new computer uh, built. Uh, the first components have been purchased. Um, it's going to be a little process. I'm thinking maybe about a month 
month, month and, and a half, half to get it completed. completed. Um, but hopefully we're once... We're going to have to throw a, throw a party when that computer finally gets put together, man. I've been Lord. hearing about it for a month. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 it's about, about a $1,600 $1, build. And I've used Mac for, for years, and this, this is a PC that's, that's being built. built. Uh, I last, last night. I went, congratulations on getting a real computer. Uh. <laughs> um, brutal. Yeah, but um, last, last night I went and uh, tried to build a comparable uh, Mac to what the specs of the computer that I'm having built, um, and it was going to cost close to five thousand dollars. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm, I'm saving, saving a ton, ton of money just having it scratch built PC. PC. Yeah. yeah. That's. Wow. Yeah. 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 This, this computer, computer is going to be a beast. beast. So, so if, if it doesn't, doesn't work uh, broadcasting, I'm just, just going to commit Harry Carry or something, you know? know? <laughs> <I don't... laughs> but it, it should. should. I mean, 32 gigs of RAM. Uh, it's it's yeah the the right processor because this computer here is just way underpowered i mean my laptop has an i5 in it but it's only got like four gigs of ram <laughs> so that's not even an option so hopefully it'll it'll clear itself out here in a little bit and uh, we'll get back on track uh, if this doesn't work I'm, I'm just, just going to pre-record pre until that time, so just bear with us, guys. Uh, thank you all for joining us this week, and we'll see you next time on TFYLP. Good night, everybody. Take care, everybody.